so you have these people who are like, you know, you hang your identity on being smart. And so you seek out those things that will like reinforce the fact that you're smart versus trying to keep your identity small and doing the things that like you are curious about and that you actually enjoy. And pushing back on formalities is important. What you got, Dylan? I was just talking last night. Uh, we had like an hour and a half phone call with a, a friend from the company, the, the YouTuber I used to work for. And we're talking about how everyone, they have this, uh, what is it? Uh, it's a character that's like, uh, I forget the acronym, but it's like just a character in a video game that just runs off their script, nothing else. Mm. Um, and just like so many people in the world, they're just running off these scripts of like, hey, how are you doing today? And like, or this is how, I don't know, you you go to school, like do this certain thing and they just go by the formula, go by the script. And then you, you come and pierce that with like some casual informality or just whatever. And I, I love that mentality. Maybe it's not super connected to what we're talking about, but um, I, I think there is so much of just reality that you realize you can change and bend. You can go to a different side of the world and explore it with these kids or um, whatever. And you end up going then to Princeton, you kind of take all these learnings and I guess you have a whole different sphere of also intelligent people. Like, what is that like coming in? Is it different from any education you've experienced before or how did Princeton feel? 100%. So I think that like, I, again, I was, I was grateful that when I was younger at the Science Olympiads, I had already met people who were, uh, let's say, they were more like, they were more, uh, they had more experience and were a lot more like well-versed in like science and physics and stuff. So it, I knew that these people existed. I'd met a lot of them. And, and funnily enough, some of the people that I'd met at those science Olympiads were at, I, we, um, we like met again at Princeton and things like that. So that was, that was kind of cool. Um, and so I think like sometimes college can be this thing where like, if you're say you're like the best uh, academics and you're like the quarterback on the football team and you're a small town and you come to college and you're like, wow, like everyone here is, is, is all, um, like you, you lose the things that you used to define yourself by. And I think mm. that for me going through UWC, um, kind of made me very, uh, confident in the fact that like, you know, you don't need to have these like other labels that you, that you define yourself by you as like a unique individual, um, the things that uh, you, you basically don't have to like have these external factors that you like hang your identity on. Um, and so I think that like the, the whole environment at, at Princeton um, I'm trying to tie this in. So like at, at UWC, I went through this whole like getting into self-development and, and spirituality and um, like <laughs> I used to share these like motivational posts and things on, on Facebook and stuff like that. And I kind of continue that into, into Princeton as well. Um, but then I, I started to realize that like, there's no, there's, there's different parts that you're on. And as much as I would thought, thought of myself as like an independent thinker, uh, at that age, I was still running on a treadmill or running a, a path that was leading to a certain place, or, or I felt that like those were the things that were important. So, uh, one example is like, when you get to college, you need to have uh, a purpose for why you're there. Like, why, why are you there? What do you want to do? For some people, that purpose is, you know, you want to go to med school, you want to go to grad school, they want to uh, go work at a bank or go and, you know, everyone has their own kinds of, kinds of purposes. And at that time, uh, and I think this happens to so many people, uh, I hadn't really thought about it too much. I was too busy trying to execute and do well so that, like, you can get into college such that, you know, once you're there, you now have to try and figure out, okay, what do I want to do here? And what does the next period of my life look like? And I think especially as a, as an international student, it was, it was a difficult question because um, you kind of have to think about, you know, do you want to stay in the U S where do you want to like live in the world? That like place aspect is, is also important. Um, and I think Princeton for me was a time where I had you, how can I put this? Like I, I was exploring my strengths and trying to like understand more about myself. Um, but also I realized like the things that I'm pulled towards versus the things that I want to push and be good at. So let me explain, explain what that means. So often we have these things that like we think we should be good at. So I, I call this like the difference between 
uh, desired strengths and actual strengths. There's some, certain things that you want to be good at, like, oh, look, uh, Dylan is a good podcaster. I, mean, I, I want to be a good podcaster like, like Dylan. Um, but there's other things that like you're actually good at that you think might not be cool, but where your core strengths actually lie. And so for me, that came in, in um, technology where like I wanted to be a good software engineer. I wanted to do well in, in engineering, but my actual strengths lay in the intersection of engineering and um, public speaking and um, like entrepreneurship, for example. So it wasn't just the fact that like I'm a good engineer, but it's how can you like leverage uh, technology as well as like my other strengths of like being uh, having like entrepreneurial tendencies and, and uh, public speaking and communication. Um, how can you leverage those things? And, and so I think that like that whole time uh, from like year one to year four, there was like a market shift in how comfortable I was with the things that I wanted to do and uh, less, less like striving for um, trying to do something to prove to other people that like you're good enough at it. So for example, at Princeton, one of the ways this manifests, and I'm sure it's the same at Brown, is people take hard classes just to show that like they're a badass. So for example, there's a notoriously hard class called operating systems. Uh, it's about how the computer works. It's a very difficult class. Uh, even, even among the smart people, like one of my uh, co-founders of, of uh, the company that I, that I did in my senior year and, and afterwards, he took this class and like, he's like one of the best uh, people in computer science that I know. And he was like, yeah, this class is hard. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm staying away from this. <laughs> this is not for me. Um, whereas other things, for example, uh, so, so, so you have these people who are like, you know, you hang your identity on being smart. And so you seek out those things that will like reinforce the fact that you're smart versus trying to keep your identity small and doing the things that like you are curious about and that you actually enjoy. And so uh, by the end of it, like I went from taking classes because I thought they said something about me. Like, you know, you talk about your class and you're like, oh, well, I'm doing this class and this class. And everyone's like, wow, you're doing this. That's, that's really cool. Like, you must be so like dedicated and stuff. Um, I went from that to like, I'm taking the things that I want to take and I don't, I don't care what anyone else thinks. I honestly don't. Like, I'm, as long as I'm happy, that's the most important thing. Um, and so that shift towards like authenticity is very important. Naval has, a, has an amazing line that says, you want to escape competition through authenticity. And I think that's like a thesis for how to be successful in life. You want to find what is your authentic self. Uh, you want to find your, your unique skills and strengths. And this is why I write about this stuff, because it's something that I feel is so important to being successful and also happy in, in life. Um, and then you just want to like escape competition. You don't want to be competing with other people. You want to transcend that. Um, and so there's a lot to unpack in those, in those four years. But I think that was like the main theme of like uh, finding your strengths and discovering yourself and like being okay with that. Um, and then in my, in my senior year, I started this company, which, which is something we can, we can get into, but that was like almost like the combination of, um, my time at Princeton. It was so funny. Like if I was, uh, when I was at UWC, if someone told me like, Hey, you're going to go to the school and you're going to start a company. I was like, wow, that sounds like the dream. <laughs> and it's, it's funny that I've actually done, done all of that. So, um, a lot of things to be grateful for in life when you, when you look back. Yeah, I think one, it's, it's interesting because we've talked about it a little bit before, but how I had this experience coming into math, like I always identified as good at math and then I just got my shit rocked the first exam at Brown and I was like, all right. Well, it happens, yeah. Uh, you realize you're, not, you're around the cream of the crop and like, all right, maybe not math, but maybe I'm the best at math, business, and just talking to people. Like maybe that's exactly. my intersection. Yeah, um, yeah. So, What did you guys study at Brown, by the way? I never actually asked you this. I studied uh, BEO, which is business, entrepreneurship, and organizations. So it's oh, and kind of Spanish okay. as well. And uh, okay. interesting off the art for, for and me. And you, Henry, what did you do? Yeah, I studied astrophysics. And oh, yes, yes, yes. Like you say, I, I always got that when I say I studied astrophysics, like people's jaws hit the floor. Yeah. And it was one of those curricula where, like, I, I think it's because people didn't know what it, but it was like, you are doing something so hard and so yeah what was weird was i was like a it's not terribly hard and i just like kind of like you said i was like i, I just do this because i like it right like well yeah. what are you going to do with that degree i'm like i don't i don't know yeah. probably music <laughs> right like <laughs> and i just don't care i don't care 
it's it's such a funny thing to hear people uh i don't know who said this back in the day but like listen to how people introduce you it's mm. fascinating and like everyone's mm. like yeah henry's studying astrophysics i'm like this clown like you it's, think he's it, smart look at him i know like i barely got out of there but it, it was so much of what you're saying off there it was like oh those were the hardest classes at the university like therefore you must be this it's like yeah yeah i think like all these things like if you can try and get away from doing things as a means of signaling and move towards doing things as a means of self expression that's like a journey that we're all on in life i think even to an extent um in entrepreneurship a lot of people use starting a company as a means of signaling oh look at me i'm an entrepreneur i'm a ceo i hustle all the time you know uh, gary v uh you know all, all that kind of stuff uh whereas i think now my my take on on whether you should start a company and how you should go about doing that is as a means of self self expression and basically taking this uh obsession and curiosity and natural skills and leverage that you have and um productizing that and putting that into the world such that like you can help people and it's a problem that you want to solve because i think ultimately that's how you win in the long term and it's kind of like even when i say it it feels like light and free whereas in traditional business it's like cutthroat and you know you got to make returns for your shareholders <laughs> and you got to outperform the competition and to an extent that's there but like the best companies uh they say the best companies are like competition aware but like customer obsessed and so the mm. more obsessed you can be in like staying in your own lane you don't have to worry about what other, pe- other people are doing the world is big enough such that you don't have to you don't have to worry about that <laughs>